Good afternoon, my name is Gwansa and it's my pleasure to present you for an international musician who is joining us from Rotterdam. Hi, George. Hi, everyone. <laughs> nice to George. see you. Yeah, nice to see you. I call Rotterdam my second hometown. How are you going there? Uh, it's going quite well with the beautiful uh, beautiful Dutch weather. It's <laughs> kind of very windy in the moment and partly sunny and uh, we're just trying to figure out how to make the best out of the situation that we have also <laughs> concerning COVID measurements. Yeah. George Tsenov is an international artist. Uh, he is from Bulgaria, but now he is based in Rotterdam. So uh, we ask him for this 15 minutes interview with the aim to share how to build international career, how it's important to plan this and then follow your plans and tasks and how it's important for musicians and in general for artists to reach international audience and then and present their artworks to them. George, let's start from your biography. Uh, you, were, you are born in Bulgaria and raised there, yeah? And then you moved to Europe. What, why did you do that? What made you to do this? Well, uh, yes, I was born in Bulgaria and I was uh, studying music since I am almost four years old. And in Bulgaria, we have that type of education. It's a bit the ex-Soviet way that you begin very young and you devote yourself to the profession of being an artist. Mm -hmm. And further on, I, I studied for, let's say, institutionally for 12 years in the National Music School of Bulgaria, Sofia. And in that time, I already did some work in the Sofia Philharmonic Orchestra and the Bulgarian National Radio Orchestra, as well as um, probably the only ensemble for contemporary classical music in Bulgaria, Musica Nova. And that kind of inspired me to even continue forward with my profession. Of course, Bulgaria back then, and I can say partly now, is not of the most developed countries in the European Union. We have music, yes, we have a scene to express this type of music, but people were not quite interested in that. So I really wanted to continue educating myself, adding on to my work, talent and capacities as a musician and build something from myself and actually show it to an international audience. And I was 18 years old. I moved to Rotterdam where I began my uh, bachelor studies in classical percussion in the Codarts uh, University of Rotterdam. Let's speak about your music. What kind of music you do? <laughs> Let's well, present uh, your like artworks to our Georgian audience. Well, to everyone, I'm a classically trained instrumentalist and that's in the field of classical percussion. For that, for the people that don't know, it's not only drums. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I play, let's say, in a symphonic orchestra. Mm -hmm. I play a lot of solo percussion. That's the instrument called marimba, which is also my speciality. It's a melodic percussion instrument. Uh, I also do quite a lot of chamber music in different settings. And there are so many things going on. I'm also an educator and I often conduct. Ah, really? It's good. Yes. It's new also for me that you are a conductor. Yes, that's like the, my third amplua. So I'm, let's say, a percussionist, performer. Then I'm educator in music and then the third thing is that I conduct. Could you share like how Georgian artists, who is emerging artists, who is watching our video, should plan uh, his or her career? Where to start? From where you start? What is the starting point? I will speak from experience because yeah. uh, I think that one of the aspects of being an artist and Many people would agree with me, but I'm sure that there, there are people that won't. But I will share it with you. Is Every artist has these moments in which they're feeling lost, right? We're doing something and then at one moment we're thinking, yeah, well, what am I doing now? You know, and 
what is this all about? And I think this is the core from where we should all begin. Like, it's the question, why? Why am I doing what am I doing? And if we find it in our hearts and in our soul, like what is actually the purpose of our creation of art, we can further on foresee in the future where we want to get to. Of course, there are other many important aspects of, okay, we need to, okay, we have talent, right? But mm -hmm. talent is only 5% of the 100 and 95 is actual work. So we need to really work hard for our dreams and actually our uh, idea of the why. Mm -hmm. And then I think a lot of people would find the proper way in which to develop themselves. By speaking of the why, I have to say that uh, when we find that, actually, uh, this is establishing ourselves as individual artists, meaning I'm not doing what somebody else is doing, and so goes for every person. So we need to find something very authentic in ourselves and develop that and nurture it and work hard for it, and then we're going to get somewhere. Yeah, but for this, like for this nurturing process, the international, international education and international environment is crucial. Let's agree on this, yeah? Definitely it's crucial and I can tell you actually what the aspect is. The aspect is that people in Western Europe, uh, they're looking at artists in a different way than we do in the East. Mm -hmm. By me, meaning we, it's also me. I'm from <laughs> Bulgaria, right? Yeah. So people here taught me how to teach myself. And that's something that when we go back in the East, and I've, I have a lot of friends, colleagues, also students that come from even Japan and Taiwan and mm -hmm. all these kind of places, for them, the philosophy of looking at education is, oh, I have a master here. And I should respect that master no matter what happens. But that means also we never question what this person is doing to us. What happens in the West is actually people are making you believe in your own abilities, making you think rationally, what should I do to be better? And how can I be better every day from now on? It's Does that answer your question to a certain way? <laughs> Yeah, it's like it's about mindset, yeah? How it's about the mindset, exactly. Yeah. If we want to succeed, I believe uh, really that we can do it also not going anywhere. Of course, going somewhere, getting more experience, meeting more cultural diversity is only enriching ourselves and building on top of who we are, which actually opens our eyes and ears and senses to everything that happens in the world that give us a better overview where we are standing with our own speciality. George, where do you find the opportunity to develop your career? How do you search for these opportunities or come, how we say, come maybe competitions or how do you find them? And let's say that, first of all, I dedicate a lot of time for personal development that means nowadays we have the luxury of having a google in front of us and a mobile phone in our pocket which gives us this window of intaking information sometimes willingly or sometimes unwillingly but if we use these tools appropriately we can get to the information that we want to get to that means we are constantly learning there are other opportunities, like, yes, there are competitions. And the way I did it, yes, I went to competitions. Of course, I won some of them. A lot of them. Yes, a lot. No, there are people that won more than me. But <laughs> Yeah, I agree. <laughs> actually, what I want to point out here is that competitions are for horses, right? If you want to compete, you can race, right? The most important thing for a competition is actually meeting people. And here I'm going to open a big topic. It's about finding your network. Mm -hmm. I think that it's so important that you should meet people, talk about your ideas, 
share information with others, look at some other people's artwork, sharing yours, and just expanding this amount of people that you have, it's quite important. I went also not only to competitions, but to some forums of classical music. And there is this thing called Classical Next that was organized in Rotterdam Mm -hmm. a few years in a row. And I was invited to participate and I was just let inside this huge, let's say, expo of Deutsches Grammophon and all uh, other kind of businesses within classical music that actually that helped me to expand my network. So now I know people from, let's say, South of America, uh, Japan, Asia, from all over the place. I have a contact which I can reach in case I want to do something there or want to develop something. Yeah, so this collaborative work is also something very mandatory or how to say important for to have this international career, yeah? Yes, <clears throat> excuse me. Yes, it's <laughs> very important. That's the networking part. Yeah. The more people we know, the more people know about us. Then. And more chances we have. And more chances we have. I can tell you that 90% of the work I have is because of my network. <laughs> it's because of people that I met and I've spoken to, I even had a few beers with them or a <laughs> glass of wine, contemplated about all kinds of things. And eventually these people at some moment remember me. So I, you invested time in your personal development. Yes. And I can give you a very nice example. When I was very young, I was accepted to this international youth orchestra that was formed in Italy back then. I was a very young boy, uh, something like 13 years old. And I was playing in the orchestra. Two years ago, that's so many years afterwards, I received a phone call from the person who was conducting the orchestra. (laughs) And he told me, I remembered you as a child and I remembered your spirit and your dedication. So I would like to invite you to work with me to teach now the new generation of musicians. So it doesn't matter at which point of your life you invest time in something and you meet people. That can come back to you even in 15 years later. So that was a proof how important it is to meet each other, to share the information. And who knows, maybe somebody will notice you somewhere. <laughs> great example and great story. George, let's talk about challenges. What kind of challenges modern artists are facing in this COVID (laughs) time? Uh, It's basically uh, finding places to express yourself, Mm -hmm. right? If we are excluding social media, Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, Mm. minus that, now we cannot do anything. And that's very sad. Also, that applies to me. Uh, Maybe I do a lot of things, but I also suffered a lot because of COVID. And because of everything gets cancelled and or postponed, it's just very sad. Another challenge is actually how can we make a living out of our profession? Yeah. Often in countries as uh, Georgia, I assume, I don't know, in Bulgaria, it's a bit like that. Being a musician, it's not a stable job. So you either have to teach uh, in order to get some income for yourself or you have to work something else and you do music as a hobby. So that, I think, is the biggest challenge. Of course, finding yourself, building a good product that represents who you are and actually getting the audience or the people to support you afterwards. And after that is the part, okay, how can I make a living out of my art? But still, like using uh, internet is also mandatory, I think. It's quite mandatory. Um, I use Facebook quite a lot and I use it not for personal reasons. I use it strictly for professional purposes. And the more and more I share things about my work, I have a very broad network. 
So then people see me and reach you. Yeah, so I, I got even invitations for concerts through Facebook and from people that saw, ah, yeah, this guy recorded the CD. So uh, we should contact him and let him know that we want to hear him live. I'm very happy to hear that because Art Inception is somehow advocating that social media is very important tool and it's not about like you like Facebook or if you don't. It's yeah, but can I, can I, um, sorry to interrupt you, can yeah. I just note something very important? Uh, nowadays people are often caught in the trap of social media and by that I mean we should really use it as a tool to promote what we are doing and not exactly promoting who we are and by that i mean social media can really amplify our ego not in a good way and i think that can be both very good and very bad for an artist right so be careful yes please be careful <laughs> And George, if we somehow summarize our very interesting talk, what are the main takeaways for Georgian artists from this interview? Believe in yourself, first of all. Don't give up. Mm -hmm. Be flexible also. Whatever comes into your way, I think that we should consider it as an option for future development. Because if we have a path that we establish for ourselves, things that come to our way will show us whether or not we should continue in that path. Yeah, and for me personally, it was very interesting that 5% is about, um, about our soul and 95 is about working. It's a lot about work. And by work, maybe that's the third point. Right? <laughs> you should spend a really good amount of time on yourself and on your art in order to make it really good. Huh? It's like a good wine. It doesn't take five days to make good wine. It takes 10 years, 15 years, 20 years. And once when people taste that wine of 20 years, they understand what this have been through. Same is with humans, same is with artists. The more we do, the more experience we get to ourselves, then this product becomes more valuable in the end. And when you express it to others, it would just be <laughs> perfect. Great ending. And I'm happy that you joined Art Inception Talks project. It was George Tseno, international musician from Bulgaria, currently based in, in the Netherlands. But I think that you are an international artist. We should present you like this. In a world of globalization, we should all think that we are citizens, citizens of the world. Yeah. Thank you very much for inviting me also. I hope to reach a good amount of audience and to help somebody. I'm always open actually for questions from people. If they would like to ask me something in particular, please feel free. Thank you so much. Take care. Ciao, thank you.